Hello and welcome to Dig Sketch, a channel dedicated to digital sketching for architects. In this video, I'll be going over how I use Procreate on the iPad during the architectural design process. Like my previous video, uh, this will just be an overview and I'll go over specific tools and techniques in future videos. So for general concept sketching, specifically for what I do as an architect, I must say Procreate just stands above and beyond the rest in terms of the right tools for the job, its usability, and its overall responsiveness. And responsiveness is absolutely critical when you're sketching. Slight glitches or delays or poor interface design are just unnecessary encumbrances that hinder your stream of thought. For years I had used a physical sketchbook for notes, thoughts, and doodles, and the development of ideas, but Procreate has officially replaced it. Some of the key features that made me give up my moleskin are the ability to draw in layers. You can't do that with a sketchbook. The ability to erase or undo or move things around the page. And being able to organize drawings and group them into folders. It makes it so much easier to find an old sketch. So here are some examples of what I've done in Procreate. I use it from early concept sketching to more refined presentation drawings. Uh, creating sections, elevations, plans, I sketch over massing models, photos, I mark up renderings, drawings, uh, it's great for doing diagrams. It's also great for just general thoughts, notes, and brainstorming. Procreate allows you to select and cut, copy, or paste, so while you're writing you can easily reorganize your page. A lot of times I just quickly get all my thoughts down and then go back and organize it graphically. Or sometimes I write too close to the edge and need to move it over. You can't do that with a sketchbook. For early concept sketching, I'll bring in a loose background image, something like this where we've just begun to mass up a building, and I'll snap a picture of my monitor. That's actually much faster than saving the image on the cloud and importing it into my iPad, or emailing it to yourself and saving it on your iPad's photos. Uh, I just find this a lot faster. If I plan on creating something more refined uh, for a client presentation or something a little more polished, then I'll actually export the 3D image and then import it into Procreate. And my process typically goes back and forth between 2D and 3D. I'll start sketching ideas and then go back to my desktop and model it in SketchUp, and then bring it back in to Procreate and sketch over it again, and just go back and forth between the two, between 2D and 3D, slowly adding more and more layers of detail uh, and thought as I progress. Procreate has quite a simple but very well thought out interface. Uh, you don't want a bunch of options cluttering the screen while you're just fleshing out ideas. But the app is actually packed with a ton of features. Just the brush options alone can be quite overwhelming. So I've narrowed down my set to just a few key pens and pencils which I've placed here in the quick menu for easy access. You can see I have a thin, medium, and thick pen along with a, a pressure-based pencil for loose sketching and a, a solid pencil for writing text at a consistent opacity. These sliders here on the left allow you to quickly change size or opacity, and you can set your own limits to these parameters in the brush settings. It does take time to learn all the features and settings, but once you distill what you need out of Procreate for what you do, and you set up your own shortcuts and preferences, the workflow is absolutely amazing. So what I'm about to go over here are all of my own personal preferences. These are not necessarily all the default settings in the app. You can research how to customize all these things yourself in Procreate's helpful how-to PDFs, or shoot me a question in the comments below. Uh, I'll also be making more detailed videos uh, on Procreate, uh, showing how to adjust some of these features and customize things uh, in the future. This small button here on the left is the quick menu. You can customize it to whatever settings you want. Also, you can customize different settings for how you use it. For example, here I press it and then tap on the screen with my finger uh, to bring up the shortcuts, which gives me access to the different pens and pencils I use most. And when I hold the quick menu button along with the Apple Pencil and tap it, now it draws hard lines. And you could also draw an angled line just by holding at the end of your stroke and then you can adjust uh, the angle of the line. So you can see it's really quick to go from sketching soft 
loose lines to hard lines, from pencil to pen, from thin to thick. And when I mess up, which I often do, uh, there are multiple ways to erase based on what I'm erasing. For quick, non-precise, medium-sized areas, I just use my finger to erase. For a large, more detailed erase, you can use the selection tool uh, and just cut it out. Notice this would be much faster than trying to erase your whole iPad screen with your finger. And once you have a selection set, Dragging three fingers down brings up the copy-paste menu, and you can move it around, scale it, distort it. For more precise erasing, you can just use the eraser brush and set the diameter to be pressure sensitive, so that the harder you press, the bigger the brush gets, and the lighter you press, uh, the thinner it gets. This is perfect when you have a complicated shape or area you need to erase. Undo and redo is so intuitive, you just tap with two fingers to undo and tap with three fingers to redo. Another huge benefit over traditional media. It's just something you can't do with a sketchbook. So for concept plans, I'll use hard lines and pencil while I'm laying out the base drawing and setting up critical dimensions. Then I'll ink it in freehand to give it a softer feel. Uh, if there's a basic CAD or Revit model started, I'll import some PDFs or JPEGs for each floor align them to scale, each on their own layer. This can be tricky though, and is one thing Procreate could improve upon, um, being able to bring in drawings to scale with a little more precision. But if I need to bring in something at a precise scale, what I'll do is I'll scale the drawing appropriately in Photoshop on my desktop computer on a specific size paper, say on an 11 by 17 or on an A3 sheet and create a drawing of that exact, exact size in Procreate so that when you import it, uh, you just bring it in at full scale and uh, it'll come in at the right size. Once you have a base plan in, you can set up a 2D grid with a uh, drawing assist so that when you hold down the quick button, it draws hard edges orthogonally. Uh, it would be great if you could rotate the grid and save multiple grids within a drawing, but Hopefully that's something they work on in the future. For colors, you can always set your own palette of colors you typically use. It's always good to keep your colors on a separate layer so it's easy to go back and edit later. And when you're done, it's easy to shoot it off as an email or save it on the cloud somewhere where you can refine it further on your desktop. So I hope this video has shown how digital sketching really offers significant benefits over traditional media. Here on the iPad, uh, one of the great things is that it's mobile. You can take it with you wherever you go. And between the iPad and using the Wacom, there are definitely pros and cons to each. So I do more of my sketchbook style quick sketches, uh, concept development on my iPad. Um, it's nice because I can take it with me uh, wherever I go. And I do more of the heavy lifting or intense client presentation drawings uh, on the Wacom. So please post your comments and questions below. <clears throat> Tell me what you'd like to see me cover in the future. And until then, I'll see you in the next video.